Shalom, Shalom, Kahala Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh, uh, Yashra. I just want to do this. This is going to be a quick response to the brother SOW, his video. And I actually, um, big shout out to the brother. Make sure y'all go check him out. I want to say I actually appreciate what he did because um, this is how we have to build sometimes, you know. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and give my response. So this it's kind of bright here. I'm gonna point out a few things. It's gonna be Chaldea, right? Now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna read some of this. Now let's look at what this says. Forgive me, I'm trying to hold the phone to read so y'all just bear with me. It says <coughs> The Chaldees of ancient Mesopotamia, which today is Iraq, East Syria, Southeast Turkey, are a live continuation of all the indigenous people of Mesopotamia, whether their tribal names, whether their tribal names were Sumerians, Akkadians, Amorites, Babylonians, and Assyrians. So let's stop. All of these people could fall under that name, Chaldeans. I 100% agree with SOJ said the original Chaldeans are going to be truly the Sumerians, the line of Shem. These are other people who just lived within the region with us. So they would be, how my brother pointed out, they would be Chaldeans by residency, but not Chaldeans by tribe. So it says Chaldeans and Armenians, the language of the Chaldean people is Aramaic, a different dialect that is spoken by Jebus. I don't know why that's even in here. Tribes of settlers who arrived in the region from the 8th century BC became known as the Chaldeans or the Chaldees. So let's stop right there. Number one, now, and I want to say this, let me get my finger out. Number one, I always like to point this thing out. When I go to Genesis 10, when I go to Genesis 10, let's go to Genesis 10 real quick. Come on, phone. And we look, verse number 21, and it says, And to Shem, also to him were born, he was the ancestor of all those who lived on the other side of the brother Japheth, the elder. The sons of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Ashaphat, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram, Uz, Hul, Gather, and Mosh. Ashapah begot Shelah, Shelah begot Eber, and Eber was born two sons, and the name first was Peleg, and the days of the earth was divided, and the name of his brother was Joktan. Joktan begot, excuse me. Come on, phone. Jokdama got Amado, Shapi, Hamazat. So some of these names are Jarel, Hadmara, Uzal, Dekala, Obal. It says Abla, Sheba, Orphel, Havala, and Jobab. And these were the sons of Jokdam. The dwelling place extended from Misha going towards Sepra Mountain to the east. These are the descendants of Shem according to their families, by their languages, and their nations. What I'm trying to point out is that I don't see the name Chaldee or Chaldean in Genesis 10. So when I see the name Chaldean, the first thing I naturally thought was that it would only be a place. It would only more or less be a place. And then there's the people that live there. So let's keep going. It says, now I want you to go notice that it says in the region of the 8th century, the 8th century BC became known as a Chaldean so the Chaldean place was already a place before the 8th century so this is only talking about people who would have moved up the short lived 11th dynasty of the kings of Babylon in the 6th century BC now why does that become important let's refer back to our notes remember this is going to be the time that Assyria is being overthrown it's going to become important. Like I said, this is just a quick response. Um, it's conventionally known to historians as the Chaldean dynasty, although the first four rulers, peep this, 
although, excuse me, although the first four rulers of this dynasty were not known to be Chaldeans, and their last ruler was not to be. So the last, the original rulers would be the Shemites, as my brothers pointed out. The overthrowing class will not be Shemites. And we can clearly see the Akkadians, Amorites, Babylonians, Assyrians. It says their kingdom in the southern portion of Babylon lay chiefly on the right bank of the Euphrates, although the name can be commonly used to refer to a whole southern Mesopotamia. It says Chaldea proper was in fact a vast plain in the southeast formed in the deposits of the Euphrates Tigris extending about 400 miles along the course of these rivers and about 100 miles in average width. It says the Chaldeans as a name, as a name of a country in two different senses. The earlier period was the name of a small territory, territory in southern Babylon extended to the northern and probably as the western, western shores of the Persian Gulf. It is called the, it is called in Assyria, Mat Kaldi, land of Chaldea. The expression Mat Bit Yakin is also used apparently synonymous, it would appear as Bit Yakin as the chief or capital city of the land of the king of Chaldea, also called the king of Bit Yakin, just as the king of Babylon is regularly styled simply king of Babylon, a capital city, in the same way the Persian Gulf was sometimes called the sea of Bit Yakin instead of the sea of the land of Chaldea. It is impossible to define nearly the boundaries of this early land of Chaldea. And in one or it says, and one may only locate it generally in the low, marshly, alluvial land of the Eustrates, and or the Eustrates, which is just a corruption, excuse me, just a corruption of the word Euphrates, Tigris and Euphrates, which then discharged their water throughout the separate miles into the sea. And a later time, the Chaldean tribe had burst their narrow bonds and obtained obscenity over Babylon and they gave their name to the whole land of Babylon which is called Chaldea for a short time. In 627 BC a series of wars broke out in the Assyrian Empire who should rule. These wars greatly weakened the empire since of the weakness of the Babylonians the Medes and who else? You should see that. The Medes and Scythians, which we know is Ashkenazi, and Carmerians formed a correlation and attacked the Assyrian Empire in 612 BC. They destroyed Nineveh, the last Assyrian army in 605 BC. In this place, Babylon under the Chaldean rule and the Medes set up a new empire as their own. Okay. Let's go. The Chaldean homeland, now this is be titled The People. The Chaldean homeland was relatively poor country in the far south Mesopotamia at the head of the Persian Gulf. The Chaldeans first came into prominence in the land of the 8th century BC. Murdoch Alpha Adenia. Now remember, if you go back to that other video, we went into this guy. A biblical Murdoch by then of Bit Yakin aligned himself with the powerful Elamite kingdom and seized control of Babylon in 721 after the death of the Assyrian king Shalmaneser IV who had ruled Babylon directly from Nineveh. The new king of Assyria, Sargon, attacked and disposed Marduk Alpha Adenia in 17 after the defeat of the Assyrians he fled into the protectors of Elam in 703. Briefly reigned or thrown for native Babylonian ruler Marduk Zarko Shumi and it says who had ascended the throne after the revolt of Babylon against the Assyrian king Shinnatrab he was one more he was once more defeated at Kish and found again to fled at Elam where he died in exile in the final attempt to raise a revolt against the Assyrian and his homeland Bit Yakin in seven hundred BC <coughs> Babylonia was ruled by a native Babylonian puppet, the Assyrian Bel 
Abni, he was replaced by Asher Nindin Shumi, an Assyrian prince who was murdered by the Elamites and replaced with a native Babylonian Elamite puppet, Negra Yuzabib. The Chaldeans briefly reigned the control of Babylon in 693 BC when, when the populace deposed Negro Yuzab and chose Meshib Marduk, a Chaldean prince, to replace him. However, this war was shortly lived and Sintreb sacked Babylon, destroying the city in 689 BC, routing the Babylon's Chaldeans and a bit of Yakin, their Elamite backers in the process, Sennacherib's successors, king of Caesarea, ushered in, rebuilt Babylon for the next 73 years. Babylon remained under Assyrian control. <clears throat> it was only in 620 under Nebuchadnezzar the Chaldeans finally gained over Babylon, founding the Chaldean dynasty after the death of Ashurbanipal, the last great Assyrian king in 627 BC. Assyria is descended into a period of bitter civil war. A rebellious Assyrian general named Sin Shumu Lisher briefly set himself up as king of Babylon, but he was ousted by Asher Lt. Itani. It says a legitimate king of Assyria. Further civil war erupted in Sin Shar Isku, seizing the throne of Assyria from his brother Ashur E.T. Alam. So, you're going to be looking at the pure Shemites. It's going to be the Asherites and who would be the original, original Chaldeans, which are truthfully the Sumerians, line of Shem. Um, now, listen to what this is right here. The Medes, look at what this is. The Medes and Chaldeans ruled Babylon together with the Scythians, with Ashkenazi. And Crimeans attacked Assyria in 612 B.C., 616 BC and 612 BC, the alliance has sacked Nineveh, killing Sin Koresh in the process. Nebuchadnezzar, with his allies, were known to possess with the possession of the huge Neo Assyrian Empire. And Assyrian king Asher Asher ben Apalit II held out Haram, resisting until 605, when the remnants of the Assyrian army and the Egyptian were forced to defeat at Karshemet. Now I want you to notice, it said the Chaldeans ruled all of Mesopotamia and the former Assyria possession of Aram, Phoenicia, Israel, Edom, and parts of Arabia. With the Medes, they took control of the former Assyrian colonies in Iran, Asia Minor, and the Caucasus. See that? Nebuchadnezzar was succeeded by Nebuchadnezzar II who became the king after the death of 604 B.C. So let's just stop right there. So Brother S.O.W., -S he's right. The real original people of that land would be Shemites. So let's just take a look at Nebuchadnezzar, okay? That's Nebuchadnezzar II. And sorry about the reflection. And if you take a good look, that is not a, that is not a white man. So people can be mad. One, look at the waves on his head. Two, look at them BBs on his face. And look at his wavy hair. Now, for y'all who don't, for some of y'all who might not know, I'm just going to go ahead and go into this. A lot of people have seen this picture before. It's a better depiction of who you would call Nebuchadnezzar. You see all the waves and this shit, right? Now, for a lot of people, excuse me, for a lot of people who look for a lot of people who look at this and they kind of can't map it out, I want to give a, a, let's give an example. See that man beard? See his hair? Wavy. See his beard? Wavy. That's exactly how Nebuchadnezzar looked. So yes, Nebuchadnezzar would have been a Shemite. I can see with the brother SOJ on that great information coming out. So for all who want to say Nebuchadnezzar was a white man, no, he was not. Look at them. Look at that hair. Look at them naps. Look at them waves. You just got to be honest with yourself. But yeah, um, like I said, this is want to be a quick positive response to the brother SOJ. I actually appreciate, I mean SOW, I actually appreciate what he's done because we actually need to build like this more 
and we will look at the Chaldeans again, you're going to see that wavy hair. The juju bees, the BBs all over his face, all over his hair. And that's all that be about. And I want to show you something real funny. Let's just look at this real quick before we end this. Look at what this is. Scythia, right? But remember, this is the Caucasus Mountains. Do not forget that. This is the Caucasus Mountain area. So, let's get another quick attack. We go to this book of Oriental Heritage, page 283. Ashurbanipal died in 627 BC. 14 years later, armor of army of Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar united with the army of Medes under Cyrexes, a horde of Scythians from the Caucasus. From the Caucasus. Told you, ask a nice what it came about the Caucasus Mountains. So you're right. The original Chaldean. The original Chaldeans would be the Sumerians, but over a process of time, we had some people come and invade Akkadians, Amorites, Babylonians, and Assyrians. So when you say Chaldean, you're actually referring to all who could have possibly lived within that area. Not just the Shemites, but all who could have lived there. But I dig, I definitely understand what you're saying when in all trueness, the corruption of the name Chaldean is only just meaning one of the tribes of Shem. So um, we can continue to build on this. Like I said, this is a positive response. Say our praise to you, how and uh, the brother SOW. Let's keep this thing going, man, because I actually like the way this goes. Our praise to you, how Shalom.